have that say amen. amen. Starting in verse 19, the Bible reads, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit to, your, to yourselves unto your hus own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his, his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished it and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. And shall be joined unto his wife. And they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife. Even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these words, Father, these words of wisdom that you're feeding us with. Lord, I pray that you would help us uh, to always live by this standard that you have given us. This, this standard of, of, of the Christian life that you've given us here in this book. Father, I pray that you would help us to be better husbands, better wives, and better yet, be a better church. The body of Christ. That's, all we, that's who we are. And I pray that we would magnify you in our personal lives. And in our marriages. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. I could no longer fly. He brushed off its wings and then watched it soar into the sky. If he's mindful of creation, on this I can depend. I am his child, and I can place all my trust in him. I can trust Jesus. I can trust Jesus. my needs. He is my strong tower, the strength in my weakest star. I can trust Jesus. He takes care. And felt they never were heard. But I held to God's hand and kept right on trusting in His word. 
My wants and God's desires don't always agree. But I lean on his will, for he always knows what's best for me. I can trust Jesus. I can trust Jesus. He never once has failed to meet my needs. He is my strong tower, the strength in my weakest star. I can trust Jesus. He takes care of me. I can trust Jesus. I can trust Jesus. He never once has failed to meet my need. He is my strong tower. I can trust Jesus. He takes care of me. I can trust Jesus. He takes care of me. Thankful for a God we can trust, huh? Amen. For a book we can trust. To the state of Texas. For being so hot. It's ridiculous. <laughs> the fifth chapter of Ephesians is strange to me because you almost can't figure out what Paul's talking about. Singing to yourselves and hymns and psalms and making melody in your heart. You know, you think it's going to be about music, but then husbands love your wives. That changed the whole thing. Um, I'm like, wait a minute, I thought we were going to talk about singing, but he goes into this thing about how God correlates uh, the church uh, with salvation or the, or the relationship between a husband and wife uh, being salvation, uh, and how we correlate that. So it's a completely different thought or train of thought. Um, it's not clear till the last verse because he uses marriage metaphorically, to teach us how we should feel about the church uh, and Christ. Um, so let me tell you something. If you're missing the church, you're missing Christ. This is, where, this is where Jesus is, okay? Jesus is always where he's supposed to be. And you're supposed to be in church. He says, wives, submit yourselves to your husbands. Now, you guys that aren't married, you need to listen to this anyway because maybe you won't end up divorced when you do get married. Maybe you'll treat your wife right. Um, notice, though, he doesn't say, it's not men, okay? Wives, submit yourselves to men. No, it's husbands. We're talking about someone specifically here. Husbands, submit uh, it's not, it's not having nothing to do with gender, okay? That's husbands, not men. 
Uh, it's in a relationship he's talking about. You've got to have structure. In a marriage, in a relationship between a husband and a wife, there has to be structure um, among, uh, uh, you know, along with many other things. Um, only one person can be in charge. Only one person, okay, the husband uh, needs to drive the car. You ever been in your wife in car with your wife and you tell her, is there a steering wheel over there? Okay. Uh, that's true. The Bible talks about uh, ladies not being able to drive. Acts 27, 15, and when the ship was caught and we could not bear up in the wind, we let her drive, right? <laughs> and then all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. Look. So the Bible clearly teaches that women should not drive. <laughs> but all seriously, all seriousness, I think that's the first time I showed that, isn't it? First time I actually showed it. I've said it many times, but we've got a lot of new people um, but, well, let me get to number one. Uh, but anything with two heads is a monster, right? right. Yeah. By the way, you can't get your kids to submit if they have never seen it modeled. If they have never seen submission modeled. Submit, submission, laying your life down. Um, so God asks you ladies to submit to your husbands. Return to thy own house and show how great things God has done unto thee. And it went his way and published it throughout the whole city, how great things Jesus has done unto me. I put that verse there is because uh, if you're not doing it, don't expect your kids to be doing it when they're your age, doing right, okay? Uh, you need to show your children how great God is. And the way you show your children how great God is and how, how uh, wonderful the institution of marriage is and that you're showing them that it works, okay, is that, you, you, you know, you, you talk about it. You say, man, this is great to be married, okay? Sex outside of marriage is wrong. You need to tell them. You need to tell them that marriage is of God. Marriage is very important, Okay. Um, marriage is the way God planned it between a man and a woman. Amen. Marriage is very, very important. And we're asking kids to learn submission when the teachers never really come to school, the mom and the dad. The mom's not submitting to the husband, and, the, of course, the husband's not treating the wife right. It's chaos. It's a mess. It's a wonder these people even have sanity when they come out of their homes. And we expect them to act right and be the right kind of mom, right kind of dad, okay? And they've, they've grown up in a hell hole where there's absolutely no submission, all right? The, the husband's not treating the wife as Christ treated the church. It's the farthest thing from that. It's total chaos, alcohol, drugs, and nobody submitting to nothing, and pride, and all the things that go with hell on earth. Um, so, do they see, do they hear you talking about the institution of marriage? Do you teach them about marriage and how important it is to be married? Especially you men, okay? You're not supposed to touch a woman before you get married. You're not supposed to touch a woman before you get married. That Doesn't that seem... And now, now they would they would call you a freak if you say something like that. Yeah. Well, the Bible teaches that. First Corinthians seven one, right? I have been off balance all day, especially if I shut my eyes. I'm really off balance. Yeah. What does that mean? Some of you doctor. Vertigo. That was a movie, wasn't it? Or something. I don't know. <laughs> Submission is to submit to the mission. You have a mission. Your marriage, okay, you and your wife, your wife and you guys, you are on a mission. Your, your mission is to make that marriage work and to do something for God in the bounds of that marriage, okay? You're not just getting married to, mar to marry a girl, okay, or, 
uh, or just to do it right. You two are one flesh, and you are on a mission to do something for God. That's the way you need to look at it. Bonnie and Clyde, you're on a mission. Amen? Amen. To, to rob as many banks as you can, you and Daisy. No. Uh, yeah. So, uh, it, your submission. Now, a lot of ladies don't like this uh, because you have because your pride. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. It doesn't only go one way. It goes both ways. You men need to submit to your wives. Ooh, that's tough, isn't it? I hate that. <laughs> but you must to make it work. You got to. But Paul, or God, is emphasizing here the man. I mean, the, the woman needs to submit to her husband. Um, and I know, ladies, it's hard to submit to somebody who's not submitting to Jesus. That's the problem. See, the Guys will come in my office and say, well, she's not submitting to me. And I just want to yell right in their ear, because you're not submitting to Jesus, you knucklehead, you. She has no respect for you. She has no confidence in you because you're not submitting your life to Jesus. And we could just stop there with many marriages. That's the problem. Okay, it's not the wife not submitting. It's the husband not submitting okay, to our Savior. But, you know, we, we can't stop there because I got, you know, I get paid to preach two, two messages. So... <laughs> That's why the verse before um, the verse before wives submit yourselves to your husbands is submitting yourselves one to another. See? Um, <clears throat> so it goes both ways, but we're going to emphasize a little bit, like Paul did about the woman. Okay, that's the main area. The woman needs to submit to her husband. And the reason it says submitting yourselves one to another is because both the husband and the wife have to have a mission. You will submit to each other if you're both on the mission. Uh, what's Julie and I's mission? Is, is to glorify God in our lives the best we can. Amen. To win as many people to Christ. Uh, to just to serve God. To, 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 to Just to praise his name. To keep his name. To keep pushing Jesus Christ. That's what we want to spend our life doing. Um, so that's the mission. Do you have a mission? What's your mission? Okay. You guys even talk about it. You talk about it with your wife? Or are you just going through life? Okay. You have a mission. The reason it says submitting, okay, is because both of you should have the same mission, mission-minded. And so many divorces or cause because they're both going, you know, the husband's got one mission and the wife's got another mission. One wants to serve God and the other one has, has no interest in serving Christ, wants to do his own thing or her, her own thing. Now, I don't know what that is. Could you stop whatever it is going off, okay? But it keeps going, it keeps going off and off and off. I stop, okay? All right? So let's, let's uh, whoever that is, just toss them out, okay, in the heat. <laughs> Not just kidding. Uh, okay, so are we on the same page? Okay. Glory to his name. I'm talking about the power of us and we over the power of I and me. Amen. That was good, wasn't it? Okay. So it's, it's not about the individual person, the husband or the wife. You're a team. You're on a mission. Okay, and, and we talk about it all the time, Julie and I, our purpose, what we're doing, you know. And uh, she, she said, one, uh, was it last Saturday, hey, let's just take a break and not show up for the bus route. I said, Julie, <laughs> that's not our mission, baby. It's not our mission. She said, let's just stay in the hillbilly pool all day and just enjoy. I said, no, we've got to get out there with Jorge and Shannon and and guys, go soul winning. We can't sit at home. So you got to make sure your wife is focused on the mission. Okay? Um, I love this verse right here. Okay? 
this should, really should be your mission if you're saved, okay? Uh, <clears throat> and it seemed evil unto you to serve the Lord. Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served, uh, they were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for you and your wife, what, who are you going to serve? What are you gonna, uh, we're going to serve the Lord. We have decided that we're going to serve the Lord. Not perfectly, not all the time. We can't do it. We're human, okay? But we've decided that our mission is to serve the Lord. What, what about you? Well, what about the, the way the world is? What about the transgender, all the push? And as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Uh, what about the sodomites? No, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. What about uh, the uh, uh, COVID and all this? As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. I, I don't care what comes along, and I don't care how much of uh, what's going on with, with the world and the fight, and the fight's always something different, and it always will be. But as for me and my house, okay, our mission Okay, together is to serve the Lord. Maybe if you figured that out, you wouldn't fuss and fight so much. Now, you're going to fuss and fight, uh, no matter what your mission is. I don't care, you know, uh, you're going to fuss. You're going to have to set her straight because a lot of times they want to go astray. Amen? So, uh, uh, the power of us and we over I and me, that's the battle in America. That's the battle. And mostly it's the men. It's us. We want to do this. We want that. We want this and that. And I, I find it in counseling and, and uh, not so much in our marriage, but in, in other people's marriages, it's the dude. Right? The dude. Okay? Uh, he wants to do this. He's tired of serving. He's tired of teaching Sunday school. He's tired of this. He's tired of that. He's probably not even teaching Sunday school to begin with. But it's he said, it's just oh, oh, the way it is. Um, this church is, is um, full of faithful women. It's got its faithful men, too. But where would we be without the faithful women in this church? Okay? The faithful Don, Donnas, okay, that cook, okay, and Barbies that does everything, okay? And uh, all you ladies, all you cooks and... Uh, People that work in the ladies that work in the nursery uh, and, and sing in the choir. You're just faithful. The women are faithful for the most part. Uh, and if you can get your husband to be faithful, you get two to be submitted to one person, then you got a team there. You're gonna make the devil mad there, and you're gonna have a lot of problems because of that. Why should the devil attack someone who's not doing anything? I always tell converts to be ready now. You got saved. Now the devil's going to, and now he's going to recognize you. Because before you were doing exactly what he wanted you to do. Nothing. Now you decide to do something. Okay. All hell on earth is going to break loose in your life. Uh, it's the same with a marriage. Um, some countries use this verse, though. Some countries that teach weird things like the Muslims. They use this verse, you know, so a husband can rape his wife. Submit to me, no matter what. That's not what that verse is saying. Uh, you don't torture a wife. Um, <clears throat> and besides, you're probably not even wearing Jovan must for men to begin with. <laughs> and this verse has been so misused um, by, especially by men. Okay, and preachers too. Um, he, Tony was just talking about all the pastors that have fallen lately because of infidelity, sexual sins. Uh, and they're the ones who misuse this verse. A red flag goes up. Um, anyway, the, I'm going to get sidetracked. But um, really what Paul's talking about, what the Bible's talking about is organization and order in your marriage. So you guys are a team. You guys, do you sit down and talk to your spouse? 
Do you guys talk about a, a uh, purpose in your marriage? Uh, a future in your marriage? What do you guys want to do? do? Do something together, maybe. Um, so, you know, Julie and I, we're, we're about the bus ministry, too. We love the bus. That's our main purpose, picking up poor people. That's it. We, we both have a heart for that. And you can only put your heart into so many things uh, and focus on so many things at once. Calling the poor is our purpose. Really, it is. And, and being in a church that, that calls the poor and sees, see what God does in their life. That's what we're all about. That's what excites me. Okay? And a little bit of football on the side. 76 days till pre, pre-season. Um, so everybody can't be the CEO. Only the husband can be the CEO. Only the husband. Son, someday you're going to be a husband and you're going to torture your wife because you're not paying attention. Okay? And you're messing with your brother. All right, so you're gonna have to, uh, your wife's going to have to come bail you out of jail because you weren't listening to the preacher because you didn't think, you thought all this was boring. But it will save you in the long run because someday you're going to make the mistake of getting married. Okay? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, make the mistake. Oh, wait. You're going to get married. It's the greatest thing on earth. I love it, Amen. being married. Um, you know, on a football team, there's one guy in charge out there, and that's the quarterback, okay? And you don't talk while you're in the huddle, oh, we should do this. We should throw the ball more often. I've, when I was a quarterback, I've had to say it, say it a number of times, shut up. Listen to me. We're going to do this, and you're going to do it. You're going to block, and you're going to catch, and you're going to run. Uh, I don't, we don't care what you think we ought to do. This is what we're going to do. Now, I suggest you don't talk to your wife that way. <laughs> but you both need to agree there's only one person in charge. And by the way, ladies, it's not all that glamorous. I wanted to call my plays, and I did at first, until the coach says, okay, you can call your own plays, but you got to study film with me after practice for two hours or three hours. While all my buddies were at the beach with their girlfriends, I was looking at the other team's film so I could call the plays correctly. My senior year, this was the end of my junior year, my senior year I went into the coach Panazon's office and said, uh, Coach, you know, I think we'd be better off the team-wise. I'm a team person if you call the play. <laughs> so it's not all what it's being in charge. Uh, sometimes you get what you ask for and you don't want it. Um, I'm not saying I want to be a woman, uh, no. <laughs> but God has different missions for different people, okay, for a husband and a wife. And be careful asking, though, for, for what you want, because you might get it. Uh, somebody must make the final decisions in a marriage. Somebody must pull the trigger. And... Uh, there's consequences for making the decision. Some are good and some are bad sometimes. So ladies, you, you need to embrace this thing of submitting to your husband. Let him be the one who gets in trouble. Let him be the one that looks like a dummy, okay? You move to the wrong place or this or that, okay? Just let him do it and just follow him. That's what the Bible says. Number four, it is a tough thing to be in charge. It is a tough thing to be in charge. A husband has a hard job. It is. And a lot of husbands are not. He, look, uh, what verse did I put down? He must increase, but I must decrease. That's what he must do. And that's where a lot of husbands fail. Uh, they don't fail their, their wife. They fail God. They fail to uh, let him increase in their life and their pride in their life. They fail to not lay their life down, and so it's a mess. 
The wife is confused. He's confused. The whole thing's a mess, and it's turmoil. Anybody ever know of a marriage like that? Yeah, your marriage has been that way. My marriage has been that way. Why? Because it's not the ladies. It's most of the time, it's the men. It's the men that will not lay their life down. Okay, so God can make the marriage what it's supposed to be. Because it's a tough thing to live for God. Does anybody agree that it's a tough thing to die to your wants and wishes? Yes. It's a tough thing to die. Okay. Um, that's the toughest thing to do in a Christian life. Because, you know, when you're making the decisions, guys, it's, you're not always right. Have you figured that one out? You're not always right when you make the decision. You've blown it before. I know there's not a lot of people here, but let me say that again. You're not always right. Ask your wife if you can say amen. amen. And I'll wait. <clears throat> but you must be man enough or woman enough uh, to live with the consequences of your decision. Your decision not to submit to your husband. You better be woman enough to live with that. Okay? And you men, when you make a decision, you better be man enough to own up to it and say, look, made the wrong decision. Let's go on. That's it. Call the wrong play. Shouldn't have called that play. All right? Uh, whatever. In life. Okay? So the only thing, being a husband is a lot more important than being a football coach or whatever. Those decisions are life-changing. And you, you don't need to play. You need to submit, okay? Because if you don't submit, it's going to mess everything up. And that's the hardest thing to do. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. It's not glorious sometimes. It's not, it's not glamorous to be at the top. Uh, the buck stops with you, okay? And that's not easy sometimes. Something goes wrong, you go to jail sometimes, right? You go to court, you have to say, yes, sir, yes, your honor, no, your honor. Unless you put the gun in your wife's purse and then... I always, I always fit that in there somehow, don't I? Weave it in there. God bless you, honey. Uh, you can't be the, the person in charge or the CEO or the preacher or the boss or the pastor or the whatever, uh, you know, you can't be the one in charge, the husband, and, and say, you know, I forgot. I'm sorry. I didn't set my alarm clock the right. Uh, the dog ate uh, my homework. Uh, no, that stuff don't fly. You know what happens? Your marriage falls apart. That's what happens. You don't take it so serious. That's what's going to happen. You're going to end up divorced paying your wife $1,200 a month. So she could take care of little Oswald for 18 years. Hello? Wives, don't make it hard for your husband to do what he's supposed to do. Submit. If he's going to make the mistake, if he's not going to be the husband he should be, we'll let him do that. Let him make that choice. Let him make those mistakes. Maybe he'll make the mistakes and then turn out and follow God and you'll have a great marriage. But if you don't do your part, you're forever going to think, and it's me, it's on me. It's going to drive you crazy. So wife, submit to your husband. There's a lot to it, isn't there? Number five, submission is having a mission that's important enough that I'm willing to sacrifice my opinion. Well, it's my opinion. that Who cares about your opinion? <coughs> Shut up. We don't need your opinion. Your husband doesn't need your opinion. You just need to submit. Don't give your opinion all the time, okay? Uh, yeah, you should get together and you should plan and everything. But let him, let him be in charge, you mammy woofers. Forget about your opinion. Uh, Job said it, didn't he? 
Oh, that you would all together hold your peace, and, should, that sh and it should be your wisdom. They all thought that they knew why this was happening. They didn't have a clue, but they, were, they gave their opinion. And he finally said, just shut up, okay? Um, well, I'm just going to have my say. I'm going to put my two cents in. Uh, here's what I think about it. And you know what? You want to know what I think? No, we don't want to know what you think. Let him be in charge. Let him be submitted to. That's what the Bible says, right? See, you're putting your two cents in because of the pride, ladies, your pride. You want to give your opinion, not to help the situation a lot of times. It's because you think you know better. Well, you know, I hate to say this, but maybe you do, but that's not going to help the situation. You're going to get him upset because where most of the pride lies is in the man. Ladies, you need to be smart about this and submit to your husband. You know, God bless you, some of you ladies. Some of you ladies, you, you got to overthink it. So, so not to make your husband mad. Can I hear an amen? amen. You got to make it look like he's in charge when he really isn't. <laughs> no, I'm talking, to, I'm talking to the real situation here. <clears throat> but he should be if he's submitting his life to Jesus Christ. Um, then you'll see that and you'll, wanna, you'll willingly want to be submissive to your husband. I'm telling you, this will help you if you'll listen. Because I see it all the time, how the mistakes are made. Being, being, be willing to sacrifice your thought, your opinion on the matter. Let him do his thing the way he should do. Okay. Um, now, you're one flesh. Okay? You're one flesh. You're, you've got your, your mission and everything. And you've talked about it before, but... Man, do you, get, do you have to always throw your little opinion in there? You guys, you need to say amen. amen. Why, are you scared of her right now? <laughs> <clears throat> That's just the way I am. I've heard that from many ladies. That's just the way I am. Well, then change who you are. <clears throat> Sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. This is not about I and me. It's about us and we, and you're going to have to submit. Have to. There's no doubt about it if you want to make your marriage right. Trim back some of you or us ain't going to work. I know that's not the best English, but it is what you're supposed to do. Okay, Die to yourself, ladies. Die to yourself. Let him do it. and Let him make the mistakes that he's going to go through. Let him make the wrong decision. Unless it's something just catastrophic, then yeah, you better step in. Okay, but hopefully you didn't marry a bozo the clown. Hopefully you didn't marry somebody who doesn't want to serve Christ. Hopefully you didn't marry somebody like that and you're miserable. You must increase, but I must decrease. You're going to submit if you're a mom anyway. You're going to submit, okay? You're, you're going to go from uh, being cute and sexy to being parental and submitting to your husband. You're going to go from your young life to being a mom and a wife. That's the way it is. Better you do that the right way and do it and and just submit because you're going to, look, your, your date night, you can forget about date night because little Oswald's going to have a fever, forget it. And he's going to be mad because, well, why did we have this kid? Well, I think you had something to do with it, bozo, right? That's why you're a team. When something happens, you do it together. You go through it together. You have a purpose, and that purpose should be to let yourself die to yourself. That's a big, that's a big part of it. i got to stop already. Love always goes with submission. You can't have love without submission. Don't tell me you love your husband and you don't submit to him. 
It's impossible. Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Okay, so you got to show your love. Okay, if you're going to, love and submission go together. We lose a lot of God's blessing for our lives because we refuse to trim the fat or forget about our opinion or change the way you do things. When you get married, there's a lot of things you're going to have to change, my friend. All right? When you, pat, when you take a certain job, when I, take a, when I become a pastor, Fred's always want me to play golf. Ever, for years. I said, no, I got things to do. I got things to do. Okay. Uh, but once you get married, guys, help me out. Once you get married, things change. You're going to have to, you know, uh, play it as it comes your way. You are the best at whatever you're the greatest at submitting to. I ain't got time to go into it. Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, not unto men. Not unto men. Ladies, don't get mad at me, please. Okay, I'm talking about me. If you do, I don't really care. (laughs) But just be glad you didn't get what God commanded the men to do. We're, we're the ones have to die. God didn't tell you to die. We have to die to all our wants and wishes. And that's why you see a lot of failed marriages because the guy can't do it. He can't do it. He wants what he wants, and he's going to do it, and he's going to get it, and that's it. So it throws the whole marriage kettywampus. Okay? You following me? Yeah, the men have the toughest thing. From God, okay? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. So you're, die, you're dead, but you've got to keep living and being a good husband to her. But, you, you know, you need to give her what she wants. What you want doesn't matter anymore. Jesus felt the same way. Can you possibly take this cup from me, Father? No. Eventually, he said, not my will, but yours be done. He gave his wants and wishes to your wants and wishes. We're the bride. He's the husband. Hello? Jesus asked you all to submit. He asked us to die. He asked the ladies to submit and us to die. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. You need to give yourself to your wife. Okay. But that's no good, if, and that won't work if you wives are not submitting to the mission, to your marriage, to your husband. A husband regards how his wife feels, and to do that, he must disregard how he feels. And most men can't do that. It's hard for me to do. If you do not submit and sacrifice to God's purpose, it will cause you to spin your wheels and get nowhere in life Some people are 55, 40, 30, 70, and their wheels are still spinning because they have not been willing to submit and sacrifice. Do you really want to be 70 years old in a miserable marriage, a miserable person? I know this is boring to a lot of you, especially young people, because you have no idea what you're you're headed for. You have no idea. The only thing that's important to you is video games. Hello? Hello? Your life is a result of the areas you give the most sacrifice. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Faithful. And, ladies, I'm blowing smoke, really. I can't help you unless your husband is faithful. If your husband's not faithful, then it is very hard for you to submit. There's a woman right there. There's a godly woman. If her husband's not faithful, she still submits. That's hard to do. That's hard to do, and it's hard for the husbands to lay their lives down for their wives. You don't see that very often, but that's what God intended it for to be. You're on a mission. That's why you're one flesh. You're on a mission to give God the glory in whatever you do, especially your marriage. The people look at your marriage and go, wow, they're serving God together. And they're enjoying it. Or they look at you, you get your marriage and go, wow. Whew. 
Man, they fight like cats and dogs. Hello. Like Tina and Tony back there. Just kidding. Let's bow our heads. Father, thank you for being the model.